Of all the competition guns in the 21st century, there is one that stands out for its continued achievements across all disciplines. And this is the latest edition of that. In this box is the DT-11 Black DLC. It's very pretty. Uh, you know I'm into my modern looking guns as much as my classic looking ones, but there is something about that flat DLC finish that um, makes me happy. From back to front you have the Beretta Microcore Pad, interchangeable length. Inside you have a balancing weight system and we'll have a look at that later in this film, how to change it and how to set it up potentially. Moving on, you have a beautiful palm swell, right or left-handed, depending on what you want. This is the sporting model, very sensible dimensions. And as with every DT-11, if you want a custom stock, you can have one made for a little bit extra money. The trigger is fully adjustable back to front and is again another DLC finish. I mean, it's a DT gun, right? They do feel great in the hand. They are um, heavily influenced by the Beretta Douay department, the handmade gun section of Beretta. And again, a lot of this gun is finished by hand. In fact, the entire gun is finished in Beretta Douay alongside the SL, the SO, you know, some of the greatest guns in the world. The action and barrels is where we start to see the real difference. They are DLC coated, diamond-like carbon. It's not really diamond, it's not really carbon. It is an extremely hard, thin surface coating. It's got this flattish, light-absorbing, dark grey colour, which is, um, I mean, it's almost black. It's really nice. The cool thing about DLC coating is that it basically gives off the finish underneath. So if you polish the metal, it looks shiny, and if you leave the metal satin, it looks satin. That's really cool. Other than it being a light-absorbing, very cool colour, it's highly wear air resistant, highly corrosion resistant. Meaning it won't rust, it won't wear off. These are all very good things. On the action you have that familiar stippling that across the top to stop glare. And I tell you what, in the flat black with the stippling, it has, oh, it does disappear really nicely. And that's good. You don't want it to be glaring the obvious and, and sort of in your face. This is an out and out clay destroying gun. Everything about it has been designed with optimal performance in mind for a gun that already has a, a fairly good track record of Olympic medals and world titles and national titles across the world. The forend is a classic DT-11 forend. One presumes you could order it with whichever forend from the DT line you like, but this is certainly one of my favourites. It's, it's bulbous enough to fill your hand, but it's not beaver taily. I've I've always liked that kind of larger round forehead on a clay gun. The barrels I have here are 30 inch barrels and every DLC will come with a carbon fiber rib. This reduces weight and also reduces the glare you get off them. You, know, you get a lot of heat haze, certainly in hotter countries. I've noticed when shooting in them, it actually gets a little distracting when your gun's riveling. The carbon fiber is supposed to dissipate that as well as some of the weight. If then you want to add the weight back, you have a full set of balance weights, again, that we'll look at later when we do the case. They are 18.6 HP tapered bores. They are the Stelium Pro barrels. And if you want to know more about them, there's a hour long film on our channel all about them that's definitely worth a watch. It really opened my eyes as to why these are worth more money. They are pretty special things. Comes with a full set of five extended chokes, white bead sight there, and I'm sure if you really wanted, they do a mid-bead edition, but um, that'll be down to your personal preference. The final thing, and I did skim over this depressingly, is the new racing line. Uh, the highlighted, is that like a light greeny yellow? I really do like it. You have the line down the side, the DT-11, the Trident in the bottom, or the Tres Fleches in the bottom, DT-11 again, and that's same on the other side. It's a cool looking gun. It is definitely marketed towards the more modern audience, but there are plenty of more classic looking DT-11s for those who prefer it, right? Honestly, the, uh, the rust-free capabilities of the barrels and action endear me to this gun as somebody who is perhaps less on top of their gun cleaning 
than I should be. I actually had the chance to put this gun in front of two of the Beretta Pro team, who have, between them have won world and national titles beyond my wildest dreams. I'd love to show you what they said. Guys, today I've been looking at the DT11 DLC. Both of you are world champions, having used DT11s, and I would love your opinions and your thoughts on why you chose the DT11. The DT11 for me has been a great gun. I've been shooting since 2013. Probably the thing that I think separates the gun from, from almost any other gun out there is the, the recoil. The gun kicks significantly less. The barrel, the Steelium Pro barrel, tapered bore uh, really is incredible, throws incredible patterns. And the recoil, if you compare it to pretty much any other gun in the market, it's significantly less. And I you mean, noticed that straight away after picking it up? I did, I actually shot a semi-auto, I bred a semi-auto for 18 years. And uh, one of the reasons why I shot a semi-auto is because of you know, lower recoil. And when I went to the DT11, I, you know, I had some of the same advantages, uh, but now in an over and under platform. I think the biggest thing with the DT11 for me is, like Anthony mentioned, the recoil, that tapered bore with the Steelium Pro really takes that initial pressure spike out that I've noticed with other brands. I've shot a lot of different guns over the last 30, 35 years, and there's nothing on the market from a production gun that, that patterns anywhere near. How many rounds have you guys put through these guns, and have you Ooh. had any problems? This gun, I've been shooting the same exact DT11 since summer of 2014. I've probably put 250,000 rounds through this specific gun. The dependability is out of this world. The longest this gun's ever been out of commission is two minutes, breaking a sear spring every couple of years, being able to remove my trigger, put a new one back in and be back in the box shooting that quickly is such a huge advantage. Um, I do, never do you carry a spare trigger with I you. I carry please? one spare trigger to every event I go to. Just in case. Put a, probably put it into perspective that a year of your shooting, that's 30,000 rounds, give or take. That's, that's many years for most other that people. Is correct, yeah. right. It's an incredible gun. It's awesome. I mean, I, I consider it's kind of a, like a workhorse. Lots of guns out there, but the gun is a competition gun. You know, it's for a serious competitor. The final thing I want to ask both of you is this one comes with a carbon fiber rib. How do you feel about that? I feel it's a great option for someone who's trying to reduce the weight of their gun. Um, if you're not reducing the weight of your gun, I, I recommend and prefer just a regular steel rib. Um, but if you're trying to get rid of some weight and have the ability to get less weight up front and have something that maybe for someone of uh, less strength or smaller stature, I think it gives you the same platform uh, with, with uh, less weight up front. I like the DLC coating. The original nickel version holds up really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other black options prior to the DLC coating maybe didn't hold up quite as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm excited for this new, this new finish for it sure. It adds a bomb-proof finish to, as we said, a bomb-proof action. That's right. pretty good. We have looked over every technical feature of this gun. We have asked world champions why they choose this platform. Oh, this left is to shoot it. Six and a half ounce load, 1500 feet per second. Through Steelium Plus barrels, should make short work of them if I can manage to put it in the right place. Ten out of ten, one shouldn't doubt one's abilities and, and learning about these barrels earlier in the year gave me a lot of confidence with it. I strangely like the 30 inch carbon rib for a, a guy who likes big heavy guns, this moves very well. Let's go find some big stuff. This gun has a half and a three quarter in it at the moment. And both the pros who use these, who spoke to me said uh, they don't use more than half because these things pattern like absolute steam trains, which is evident from the way those targets got switched off. Now we've got a 50 yard looper and a nasty edgy incomer. You know, these targets aren't super tasty today, but they still take some shooting. All right, don't forget the card. I always forget the card. Probably put more steps in at the playground going to get cards than I do anything else. Uh, one away there. That second to last bird held up on the wind, and I just stuttered with the gun. But other than that, absolutely loving it. That carbon fiber rib really is nice and reactive. And on the big stuff, I tell you what, it didn't feel that inhibitive either. I guess it's, it's what you're used to and, and how you like to shoot. We're all different, right? 
I'm shooting some club 24 gram shells, super fast. Very interested to see how these perform. The Stelium Plus and the DT11, there was things said about them not loving uh, cheaper end fireboards or fireboards. Well, I have learned that that's rubbish, but hey, let's shoot some. All right, look, look at me. I'm switching to top barrel first. I think I've ever done that in my life. I just generally change barrel for choke, knowing that that target, even at 65, 70 yards where you're shooting your edge on, a 24 gram cartridge will smash that every time. We've proved it on the channel. Fun little things that boost your confidence. Don't think I'll be able to do it again. Or will I? Struggled a bit with that A bird. I shot clean over the top of it, but actually when I brought the gun down into line with it, probably only about 60 yards edge on, which is still a long old way. 55, 60 yards. Took some controlling, but when I hit it, absolutely mulled it. It's clearly no issues with fireboards. It's funny how rumours go around, isn't it? 27 out of 30 on sporting from three medium to harder stands. Happy with that first time out with the gun. It's certainly very controlled when you want it to be and very reactive. That lack of barrel weight through the carbon ribs is kind of nice, but carbon ribs are a, a personal preference thing. And I prefer the way they shoot sometimes for sure. Maybe in a 32 inch, it might be slightly better for those long ones, but then, like I said, it's hardly like it fits me. I don't mind making excuses for it. Should be quite happy with that. Right, to finish up, we're gonna shoot around on the sport trap, see how we go. It's always a good way of testing a gun because of the variety you have here. If there's any holes, we'll find it. Although it would be nice if gun manufacturers made guns in a 16 inch stock as standard so that I didn't have that excuse. <laughs> Uh, that bee bird was tasty. Probably should have looked at the targets before getting in here, but I mean, nothing wrong with uh, practicing a bit of reactionary shooting. It'll only get better from here. And D Sim E, let's go. Shooting this gun was an absolute treat. I am a big DT11 fan anyway, and this is just as good as everyone that has come out, except this time it won't rust on you. And honestly, I went on a right deep dive about DLC after my trip to Italy. Diamond Light Carbon is pretty special because graphite uses three of its four electron bonds and diamond uses four of its four electron bonds. This uses a mixture of three and four to create a pretty unique surface. All of the benefits of carbon, all of the benefits of diamonds. It's very special modern technology. And, you know, I'm a great believer in moving things forward. It's nice to have a well blued gun, but I'll tell you what, I prefer a gun that doesn't rust. That's a good thing. Let's have a little look over the action itself and pop the trigger unit out. What's interesting to me about this gun is that unlike the DT11 Black, it has a steel trigger unit. That's kind of good in my opinion. I like a lot of mid weight, and although losing weight with the carbon fiber trigger unit is cool, a steel trigger unit just adds weight in the middle. It's also going to be stronger over the course of its life and that matches up to the strength of this DT11 action. I love when you look over these, there are so many hand polished and hand filed surfaces. It just adds a little bit of extra special stuff to the gun. To drop the trigger unit out, you push that safety catch forward and then forward again and you push your top lever across and then the trigger unit comes out. Every gun has its little quirks and I expect the first time anyone picks up a DT it'll take a couple of attempts just to, to get that feeling natural. As with everything Beretta, every part of this trigger unit is hand regulated and hand sorted to give you the absolute optimum trigger pulls. And that's good. I mean, you don't get much better. Again, it's always personal preference and you can have them tuned and slicked. But when it comes to the DT line, that doesn't, there isn't much left to do. What you can do with them, and it was interesting talking to the Americans, is that actually they carry spare trigger units. And what you could do is instead of buying a steel one, you could buy a carbon one as a backup or as a chain so you can actually shoot this gun with both. The weight difference is certainly interesting. It's no, not a bad thing, not particularly a good thing. It's gonna be a personal preference thing, right? Why do people like 32s? Why do people like adding more barrel weights? Why do people like faster or slower guns? Because we're all different physiologically. We're all different mentally. We all approach targets differently. So that's kind of cool. Honestly, I just wanted an opportunity to get the carbon fiber trigger guard out because I can. The beauty of these guns is that every trigger unit will just drop straight in. And if you are using this gun in a competition environment, a high level, 
it makes sense to have a spare trigger unit because it will just get you going very quickly. What's interesting about this gun is it is set up as a competition gun. There's a lot of halfway houses and sporters that are designed for lower level. There's nothing about this gun that isn't designed to be taken out and shot at high standard at world championships. It's easy to get a spare trigger unit and in the box you have some spares, including two spare firing pins. The beauty of that is that if your gun does go click, although I don't think I've ever seen a DT-11 firing pin break, you do have a spare. Before I put the box away, I have a quick look. It's a nice box. It's a black ABS case with a black cloth liner. You have a Beretta sticker, some pajamas, two snap caps, and a box of extended chokes from everything from cylinder to full. Choke key and some Beretta gun oil. It's quite nice, really. You also have a stock key, so you can take the stock off easily and inspect inside. Again, they only put that on their competition guns because in a pinch, you're gonna need to fix it. Certainly, you don't want a gun breaking down at that level. And if you do, a gun like this you can fix in five seconds is particularly handy. And it's an interesting thing to get your head around as well. Those guys saying they're shooting 30,000 rounds a year. That's a lot of ammo. That's a lot of punishment to put on any gun. And when you think this gun's been in the hand of trap shooters who shoot that and more year on year on year, it's pretty awesome. If you haven't watched our other DT-11 videos, it's worth saying that every wearing surface on this is changeable, but the bearing surfaces as well are much larger than on the 686 line, the 680 series. If you look at the barrel, for example, when we put it in the gun, these parts here that actually draw in against the action are replaceable with oversizes when they wear. The hinge pins that the barrels open and close on are replaceable for oversizes when they wear. And the most important part, that top locking cross bolt that locks across these two lugs, keeping that action shut and strong, guess what? They're replaceable when they wear. You're not gonna be doing this every day. Most shooters don't shoot 30,000 rounds a year. And when speaking to those guys, they're only having it rebuilt and tightened up sort of every 60 to 100,000 rounds. And they're shooting big punchy cartridges as well. You know, that's, that's pretty good. It's pretty low cost maintenance once you've invested in the gun, which is cool. In the spares case, you have a very small flathead screwdriver. It's a Beretta screwdriver in the Beretta blue. That is for adjusting your trigger. That just goes in there. You pull the pin out and that will slide into any predetermined fixed position. You have a top firing pin and bottom firing pin with return springs. You have a large orange bead, a small orange bead. This is the stock balancing weight system. It's very simple. You have one screw, different weights. You slide as many in as you like to get that gun balancing where you want. I've set a few of these up for people in the past. It's a it's very simple as a process, but it will take time. You'll be putting one, two, three, four weights in. You'll be kind of playing with those front weights until you get a gun that feels like you want. And then you need to go and shoot it at a variety of targets for an extended period of time. And, and be aware that it's a bit of an evolving process. It's rare to nail balancing a gun perfectly for yourself on the first try. Honestly, I thought out of the box it shot great. I wouldn't look to change anything too soon. Maybe a little bit more overall weight for certain targets, but you know, it depends on the courses you shoot, the styles you shoot, and you know, how you shoot, most importantly. Also comes with these little barrel weights. They are very, very simple things. If you look at them, it's all say five grams. They come in different weights and you can put them anywhere up this barrel. So if we put those in the midrib there, he says, there's another five gram. Five grams is one sixth of an ounce. If we put that in there as well, if you've never put one of these together, it's much like all the other Berettas. You have these ejector lugs, they need to go into this channel at the top, and you have these hooks that need to go over the inside of these trunnions you see on the outside. Take it from a higher angle, and away you go. It's, um, again, a knack, a bit like taking the trigger out. Once you put the forend on, that secures these weights in place. They are magneted in place. However, obviously, recoil, if there was no forend, well, they'd probably ping off occasionally. So that forend just keeps them in place. And you go with those two weights, we have a gun that is ever so slightly front heavy. And without them, interestingly, it probably is still a little bit on the front. That's probably why I like it. I used to like quite a neutral gun, um, but as I've shot more and sort of learned more about whole points and shooting styles, I do prefer a heavier gun. It's a little bit more controllable, but again, 
I'm also six foot seven. I, uh, I move a gun the way I move a gun. Here we go, now take those weights out and you have it perfectly over the hinge pin. It's amazing what 10 grams makes barrel weight wise. That is, um, I think that's pretty awesome. Before we finish, we should mention the wood. It's very similar to wood you get on other DT11s, of course. Hand oil finished, beautiful grain. You'll see all manner of types, ones with heavy fiddle back, ones with high contrast, one with low contrast and tighter grain. It is laser checkered to a very nice 24 lines per inch with the diamond on the top. It's a very nice gun and as an entire package, I mean, the DT11 never disappoints. You rarely meet someone who's bought one who didn't feel that it was not enough gun for them, that is for sure. Guys, I've enjoyed sharing this with you. Take care, goodbye, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching, guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.